Awesome. Okay, I'm going to start and I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to jump right into Picasa. Okay. So in Picasa, let me give you a little basics about how it works. I do 99% of what I do with these simple functions right here. But then you've got these tabs and they allow you to do a few other things. By the time you get to this fourth and fifth tab, it's fancy stuff. And honestly, most of the time, people are using this as a utility. They just want the photos to look as natural as they can be. But if you're looking for more of an artistic flair to what you're doing, these last two tabs can be helpful for that. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the basics. And by the way, if you don't already have it up on your computer, if you'll open Picasa on your computer, I'll pause for just a second and make sure, if you'll give me a thumbs up once you've opened it. Will, how do I um, minimize the screen to open it? You should be able to go up in the top right corner and there'll be that little dash to minimize it. Okay, thank you. No problem. Well, I, it's it's not letting me minimize. It's not Unless letting I, me maybe minimize. This one, I, I can't. Okay. Oh, maybe yeah, that's the because top, that's yours. The top right says view on mine. It says view? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me, so what I can I, do. I, okay, go ahead, Joe. Okay. Now, is this something we, well, I'll try to get it. Well done, Ken. I see that you got it. Thanks. Yeah, I, I've got it, but it's just temporary, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. okay. If you are able to come back to the screen that I'm on and you can maximize that again. Okay. Okay. So one of the most basic features that you would use is crop. Mm -hmm. So within crop, there are a few options it's good to know about. They have these preset ratios that you can use. So if you want a four by six, for a print, if you're looking for an eight by 10, if you're looking for um, a 16 by nine, which the reason that you would use that is if you were looking to put a photo in a video, the widescreen is 16 mm -hmm. by nine. So that would be formatting your picture to the screen. So you could select any of those. So for example, if I did four by six and I drag it, it's gonna keep that ratio. Mm -hmm. And it'll know to switch from vertical to horizontal. OK, so I'm going to cancel out of that. And I'm going to go back into crop. So I could do 4 by 6, 8 by 10. I can do manual. And Kim, likely you're going to do a lot of manual with slides because mm -hmm. they're going to be different shapes. So you want mm -hmm. it all manual. And then you can make it any shape that you'd like it to be. OK. The only other thing that I'd like for you to know is to get a custom aspect ratio. So let's say you're working on a project and you know that each of the spots where a photo might be in, if you're printing it out and you're putting it in something or in a video is gonna be a unique size, you can create a custom aspect ratio. And that will make sure that every photo that you crop is the same size to whatever size you want it to be. So that's, that's the purpose of that. So now I've got my custom manual, excuse me, I've got my manual size and I'm going to apply. Crop is pretty simple. And then the next thing I'll show you is red eye. Mm -hmm. It's pretty smart. You'll see it does these little green squares right over top of it. If there is an eye that has red in it that you can see, but the computer cannot. 
you can drag and create a square over it and it will look and try to take that red eye out. It's not 100% accurate, but it does do a good job. So then once you know that you've selected the right things, you can apply. Um, it did kind of a funky thing right there, but um, it should do it right in general. Let me, yeah, it would just take it away and make it look right. So um, we've got that. I'm gonna show you some things that are more natural uses for this, but this is the feature that will make it worth doing all of what we're doing. This is the best feature that I think is in here. It's called retouch. So what you do in retouch, you have this circle, you find a spot that you would like to replace what is there with something else. So an obvious one would be if you see this little black dot on the arm, can everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if I want to get rid of that, I'm going to find a circle size that's just right. I will click where it is, and then I will slide to a place where the coloring is just about exactly the same. And what it's doing is it's blending. It's blending the colors from the two locations. But now, no scratch. Kim, I bet you're going to have tons and tons and tons of those little scratches <laughs> and dust. It's almost impossible to get rid of all the dust when you're scanning. Right. And I try really hard. OK, so then you can also see that there's one right here on the baby's arm. And then after you do this for a while, you'll see there's another one here. Now, this finger one is tricky. If you look at it, there's lots of different textures. There's the shadow between the fingers. The finger itself has some different colors to it. So this is a little harder. So this program is great. I can zoom in. And then when I zoom in, I can drag. This circle is way too big because here's what's going to happen. When I do it, it's going to replace you see how it put that shadow over the finger? So that's not right. I'm going to undo the patch. It only undoes the last thing I did. So now it's back. I'm going to make my circle a lot smaller. And I'm going to come in and pick it off just a little bit at a time. I got these little things here. I don't know if they're moles or dust, but I'm just gonna get rid of them just in case. <laughs> and then that's done. Okay, I'm gonna show you some other things. So you'll see up at the top, here's another one that I could have gotten rid of. If you want to get rid of a birthmark or a, a wound, you can do that. Same way, let me, let me show you how that would look down here. So I'm gonna make, the circle so that it's completely bigger than what I'm trying to replace. This would not work. This would not work well. I'm gonna make my circle big enough to cover the whole thing. I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger. And again, I'm gonna replace it with something right above it. Okay. All right, so um, this program doesn't auto save. You must save it. You can go to file and click on save, or if you see right here, you can press the control button and S at the same time, and that will save it. Please make sure <laughs> that you save it because it can be frustrating when you do all that work and then it doesn't happen. Okay, I picked this photo out for some different reasons. One, it's dark. So I'm gonna start with a crop, just like I did before. I'm gonna leave it on the manual function. And then I'm going to apply. 
Okay, a beautiful feature that Picasso has is this one called, I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> Y'all see that? Yes. yes. It's great for grainy things and for some of your dark things. So let's see what it does. I haven't actually done this one, but I think it's gonna help. Okay, it made it a little darker, but it also took away some of that graininess. Let me undo it and let you see it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if I do that, and then I would like to lighten it up just a little, I can go to this fill light, which is a slider, and I can pull it just a little bit to bring out the light. If you do too much, you're going to whitewash it. It doesn't look good. So you want to do just enough. All right. Without trying to go too deep, let me share one more thing here on the retouching. So with the retouch, if your mark is touching the edge, mm -hmm. your scratch, the line that you're trying to reach is touching the edge of the photo, watch what happens. If I zoom in up here, which I'm going to, you see how it lift a little smudge. Mm -hmm. If the line is thicker, that smudge is going to be thicker. It's going to, if it's, if the, the scratch covers over to the edge of the photo. So what I've learned to do instead, so that that doesn't happen, is I will make my brush size a little smaller and I'll just get the end of it, but not all the way to the edge because that little line looks better than a smudge. And I can do the same thing here. Um, and it, it's going to leave a tiny little smudge, but these are small. So edges can be a challenge. If you're dealing with something small like fingers, that can be a challenge, but it's doable. Sometimes the best way is just to zoom in. What I will tell you is if you're a perfectionist, beware of zooming in because you'll find lots of imperfections when you zoom in. I had to learn for my business to stop zooming in on everything because I could spend 20 minutes, 30 minutes on a single image in doing th some things that most people will never see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've, uh, we've got that. We did a little retouching. We used, I'm feeling lucky. Now I'm going to skip over here to the third tab where the paintbrush is. And I'm gonna show you saturation. What saturation does is it brightens your colors. So I'm gonna go back to where it was. So basically here was where we started and here is where it's suggested. You can adjust, it's very adjustable on this to go higher or lower. You find if you want it, you find what you like and then apply. I think saturation is helpful. Um, sharpen is also a good feature, but let me show you, if you overdo it, then you make the photo grainy. So I found that if I use Sharpen because the image is fuzzy, a little is best. But it can help with your fuzzy photos to give little edges to things so that it's a little easier to see. All right. Uh, let's see. This is a good one. I believe I included this one because it's a good one to use that saturation <laughs> on. So before and after, can y'all see the difference in that? This is before and this is after. So it brings a little color to it. That's a good example. You know, the sun does funny things <laughs> to, to the color. You, as you probably heard this before, but photographers love the first morning light and the last evening light, but the middle of the day tends to dull 
colors. So you can bring a little life back to the colors by, by using that. This one, you guys are gonna love this. So I'm gonna crop it. You need to crop it first when you use, I'm feeling lucky because the way I'm feeling lucky works is it looks at the composition of the photo and then it makes a judgment on what it thinks will make it look best. If you have a lot of black or white, it will take that into account and it will skew it. So crop first. And then I'm feeling lucky, which makes it look a whole lot better. Not perfect, but a whole lot better. And then I can lighten it up just a little bit. Let me pause for just a second. Do you guys have any questions on the things we've done so far? No. No. Well, when you talk, I do have a question. When you yes. talked about saving it as a particular size, <laughs> was that so that if you want to print it or it's better to the file itself to save, it's, it's a, a better size to save it. Mm -hmm. So the sizes that I was referring to is the size that you're gonna crop it to, not the resolution of it. So the resolution is how many dots there are, tiny little dots in the mm -hmm. picture so that if you expand it, you'll still be able to see it well. That process is what happens when it's scanned. So if you're using a scanner or you had a digital photo off your phone, Monica, it's going to be a particular resolution. The higher the resolution, the more the dots, the easier it is to expand. Okay. But what I will tell you as a, as a rule of thumb um, is that if you're using a photo or a slide that doesn't look all that great to start with, <laughs> Don't make the resolution too large. It's going to slow down the process of digitizing it if you're if you're doing that. And it's not going to give you very much return for all that work. It's just going to make the imperfections more clear to see. Mm. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yeah. OK, so on this one, this is a good opportunity to show you guys Another thing with the retouch, as I told you, the retouch is the thing that I think helps the most to clean things up. So if you look at this little dot right here, you see this pillar-like thing has a bunch of vertical lines and horizontal lines. So if I wanna replace this, I can click on where it is and then drag down, but I need to make sure that I'm lining it up correctly, not like this, but move it so that those lines stay straight. I'm following the grain. If you guys have ever heard that when you talk about wood to follow the grain, but I'm following the grain of whatever it is that I'm working on. Uh, curtains are very much like that. If you have a big scratch on curtains, you just wanna go down the curtain the way it is. If you have something that's going horizontal, you wanna follow it horizontal. And then now it's replaced. This is going to be even harder because you've got these little things, decorative things here. So I'm going to try to go all the way over and get it to space just about the same. That's my best guess on getting it. So it's a lot of little Detailed work at first, I thought, you know, some of the things were either A, irreplaceable or B, it just didn't matter. I would just replace it with something. But if you learn how to match up what it is you're trying to replace in that spot, there's a lot of things that you can do. So I, I can do this fairly easy because this is all dark. So I'll just replace it with more dark. And then there's a little bit right here on the shirt. Again, I'm going to follow the lines on this guy's shirt. So I'm going to go to my right and just do it real slow. Hmm. So you can do all that. Um, I want to, what I want to tell you is if you want to take the time, if you have a couple of photos that are just really important to you, right? And you want to take the time to make those couple of photos look really nice with retouch, 
you can make them look fantastic. It just can take a while. Okay, let me, uh, this guy, the retouch, you can see all these little dots that you could do, um, like the hair. I'm gonna follow the blonde down and I'm gonna go across on his forehead. So I'm staying with the color of the skin. This nose is gonna be tricky. I'm gonna go really small because I don't have a whole lot to work with right there. So I'm gonna get that little tiny dot and go straight up. And you see how it blended it? Mm -hmm. It blended the colors. If I go a little slow, it'll blend those colors. I can do his leg down here. You see right here, it's coming off the edge. So that's gonna leave a smudge mm -hmm. if I do it. To be frank with you, what I do oftentimes in that case is when I crop, mm -hmm. I just crop that out. Mm -hmm. It's really not essential to have the edge of the foot there. It's not taken away from the photo, in my opinion, to crop that out. And so to me, that looks better. Mm -hmm. Cropping can be a beautiful thing. Um, and then I could do red eye again. It selects there to make his eyes red. I don't know why it's doing that, but yours shouldn't do that. I wish I could tell you why. Um, you could lighten this up a little if you wanted to. You could give it a little more color. To me, that looks a little fake. So I'm gonna back it off a little bit. You can also make it sapia hmm. or black and white or tinted. I don't want that. <laughs> um, but black and white in sapia, I think, would be possibilities. If you want something, uh, Joan, if you want to take your old-timey photo and make it look even more old-timey, <laughs> you might add a little sapia to it, turn it into a sapia tone to accomplish that. I'm going to undo that and undo that and undo that. So we're back to where we started. Okay, I'm just about finished with the examples and then I'm gonna let you get onto your program and try a few of these things. Uh, if you guys don't recognize this, this is Stone Mountain in Georgia. If you look at these folks, it's kind of white on white and there's not a lot of definition to it. So second tab over shadows, We'll put some shadows around those edges and make the people pop out a little more. So let me show you before, mm. after. Mm. So I have definitely used shadows a good bit. And let me see. I believe, oh, this is another one. If you have photos that have a reddish tinge or an orange tinge to them, let's do the crop first again. And I'm gonna apply that. And then now I'm gonna do, I'm feeling lucky. Yeah, Ken, I saw the wow, I saw the wow, okay. Once I've done, I feel lucky. I'm gonna save it. I don't know. Normally what I would do, I apologize for that. I, I, I tried to uh, anticipate a lot of things, but apparently I missed that one. Um, you can save it and then you can apply it again and it will sometimes bring it even closer. If you look down here, I don't know exactly what a histogram is, but every time I do it, you see how it was here to start with. Mm -hmm. And then when I do, I'm feeling lucky. It's trying to make those colors more natural. So that's, that's what it's doing. So for your information, you can usually do that twice. Okay, uh, let's pause here and let me ask again, is there any questions? 
Okay, so now I'm going to stop sharing, and I would like you to try to get to your Picasa. Another thumbs up when you're in it. I'm in it. Okay, great. I didn't know how to do this stuff. <laughs> in is in. That's great. Yes. Okay, I'm in it. Great, Joan. And Monica, you're working on it? Well, maybe actually I'm not. I'm <laughs> Um, you know, it acted like it downloaded this morning, but I'm uh -huh. having difficulty, like it's not compatible, maybe. So I'm I may have to work with it after. Okay. It says something Monica. about a Sierra or 10 point something or later. Or... Are you using a Mac? Yes. Okay. There are issues with using it on Mac. Um, so I might need to help you find a different program, but I think I can help you find something, Monica, that will have similar functionality. Okay. So... Thank you. So yes. Okay, I, I thought it would work on Mac, but I've had a couple people say that it didn't. Um, by the way, Kim, let me take a moment to answer your question. When scanning, what DPI is best to scan at? For yes. slides, anywhere from 300 to 400. It depends on how many slides you're doing. If you're doing okay. a lot of slides, I highly recommend mm -hmm. 300. That will save you some time for each time you scan. Go ahead. I've been doing 1200, but it can go way higher than that. But mm -hmm. it takes a really long time if I go higher. I don't think that you need to do 1200. Okay. Unless hypothetically, if you are planning on blowing it up to be not an eight by 10, but like a, a poster size. Okay. Then you might need that. But if an eight by 10 is probably the maximum size, 300 yes. to 400 DPI is plenty. Okay. Yeah. It will speed you. you up. <laughs> you'll, yes, you'll, it will. <laughs> you'll redeem some time as a result of that. Okay. So Joan, Ken, and Kim, um, yes. if you look on the left of your screen, let me, let me open. Well, I'm, actually, I'm not in it right now. I messed up something. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I should have done. I didn't read to do this earlier. So sorry. No worries, no worries. As you're doing that, Joan, um, uh, just let me know when you get to the point where you're with us. If you have some issues in a minute, I'll stop and help you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Kim and Ken, if you look over here under file and you yes. can um, import from. Yes. Uh, well, that would be, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. That's if you're connecting a device to it. Um, so I'm gonna go back out of this. Okay. So now I have all these folders here on the left side. Mm -hmm. I can um, add a folder to Picasa and that should allow me to go into my computer and select. So I have selected some photos that I was going to use, and I sent those to you. I don't know if you're able to navigate your way to it. Do you know how to navigate to it, Kim? Yes, I already loaded them earlier. Ken, how about you? I loaded them earlier, and I am looking for them right now. OK. <laughs> hey, Ken, let's try something, if you'd be willing. At sure. the bottom of your screen where it says share screen, okay. can you click on that? It should be there in the back of the middle. And then select the screen that has your um, Picasa on it. It okay. may give you different options and click on that. And we'll just look there at the screen with you. Okay. Is that happening? Oh, there it is. Share. Wonderful. Okay. Oh. Wow, that's so great. Okay. <laughs> So you downloaded it today. Do you know where you downloaded it to? Yeah, it ended up going into my download folder. So. Okay. 
So try your um, C, the C colon one, and go to users. And click on that little, yeah, that's perfect, Ken. Yep. And then downloads. Photos to work on. Yay! It's a great Yay. way the plan comes together. And then just click OK. OK. And should bring those up. I think it's thinking. Hopefully it's thinking. Click on the folders there right where your mouse is. Okay, that's Tennessee. Um, okay. Um, if you'll minimize out of this for just a second. Sure. If you go to the top right where the little dash is. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. And click on that. Screen is paused. Okay. So you may need to um, share your screen again in a second, but on your computer, do you know yeah. how to navigate to my documents? Yes. Okay, so you should be able to go into your Windows Explorer and find downloads there. Right. Go into that folder. Okay. Tell me when you're there. I'm there. Right click on the first photo. Okay. And you'll see a, a, a thing that says open with. Open with. And then slide over to the right, and is Picasso one of the options? Yes. Click on that. OK. That Let's is the way see. to pull up directly the one that okay. you were looking. OK. So you'll need to, I believe you'll need to stop sharing your screen and then reshare it so okay. that you can be looking at what you're seeing. And share Casa. Sure. Excellent. Yay. Okay. 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 <laughs> so I, need to... I believe you're in Picasa viewer. If you look down a little bit from that, it'll say open Picasa. Okay. Edit in Edit. Picasa. Yes. Okay. There it is. Ah, oh, it's doing the same thing again. You're probably going to have to stop share and then share sure. it because it's only okay. letting you do the window that you're on. Thank you for your patience, Ken. Thank you for yours. <laughs> yes. Okay, so right. on a photo like this, um, go ahead and start, Ken, and just try out the crop feature. Sure. And crop it any way that you want to. Okay, and then apply. Great. Okay, so the thing that I immediately notice about this photo is that it looks like it's green on the right and purplish on the left. Yeah. So try I'm feeling lucky and let's see what it comes up with. It didn't do a whole lot. Um, so you can just undo I'm feeling lucky. Okay. So then um, go to that second tab. The shadow? Yes. Shade. Yes. And try the shadow. See, see what that does. Just pull that mm -hmm. slider over to the right a little bit. I think it'll bring some of it into the edges are a little clearer now. It's a little less washed. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can go back to the wrench tab, the first one. OK. And then try the retouch. OK, slide your mouse over top of the photo. OK. That'll show you how big the circle is that you're working with. 
I think if you go, there's one, two, three, four kind of spires. The fourth one is a little lower. And to the right of that, there are some dots. To the right That's of right. that. Keep going to the right in the cloud. Right oh, yeah. There, right there. So click there and then pull your circle up to one of the spots on the clouds where it's all white, any cloud. And then click. There you go. Replaced. Hmm. If you go down into the bottom right of your photo, yes, there's some green right there. Yeah. You're probably going to need to make your circle smaller so that it'll fit. That's good. Perfect. And then go down there, click over it, and then slide to your left. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well done. These little details, if you look again at that fourth spire over to the right, okay, so if you go over to the right of that, there's little green things mm -hmm. right on top of it. I'm just going to tell you that those are going to be really hard, but let's try it. So, Ken, right go here. down and you see the slider at the bottom of your screen. There's a one colon one. Mm -hmm. There's a little magnifying glass, and to the right of that, there's a slider. Here, right yep. there. Pull it all the way to the right. Okay, now if you see over in the bottom right corner, it says zoom to 380%. There's a little square. Okay, it may be the, the zoom program is sitting over on top of it. Okay, go over a little more to your right. Okay. A little more. And then go up a little bit. I don't see your mouse moving now. Is it still moving for you? It is, but it's behind the... I gotcha. Let me... Uh, there we go. Okay. So I... Zoom to 380. Yes, yeah. perfect, perfect. Okay, bring your mouse down so that your mouse is right over that little part that's selected of the photo. You see okay. there's a, a small rectangle inside of it. Right. Drag that down into the right. Down, 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 right there. Perfect, right. that's perfect. Leave it right there, go back to your brush size on the left and go to the smallest that you can make it. Okay, okay. now find one of those little green dots that's on top of the building. You can pick the one that you want mm -hmm. and see if you can replace it. and find a similar, yeah, that's good. That's good, you okay. found a similar color. Okay. Yep, and then you can move it a little left or right to line it up, make sure that the lines stay straight. Okay. <laughs> here's, here's a funny thought for you guys. Sometimes yep. there'll be a big scratch. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So click anywhere, go back onto your photo and click anywhere. Okay. And then go to undo patch. There you go. All That's right. You, you always have the undo patch. You're saved. And you could um, cancel the whole thing, and it will cancel out all of the stuff that you did if you need to do that. Okay. Okay. So this is another, just based on my experience, if you're doing things with like mountains or clouds or forests, you have a little leeway when you're fixing these things because clouds aren't always the same, right? If you move a cloud and you change its location just a little bit because you're trying to get rid of an error, it may change what the cloud looks like, but it doesn't really change the photo. If you change the vegetation on a tree because there's a big X on it and you replace it from the, with the vegetation from another tree, it's okay, I think, because it's not really messing it up. So what, what makes it hard is when you have something like this with architecture that's irreplaceable. Right. Okay, so let's hypothetically say that you're finished. I like that you are continuing to practice. You just click on apply. Okay. And it's gonna zoom back out. 
All right, let's see. Um, go to the straighten feature. I haven't used that yet. This is wonderful. It gives you a nice little grid. So if you go to that slider in the middle of it, Ken, pull it to the left okay. and the right. Whoa. Yeah. So Kim, I'm gonna say again that if you've scanned enough things, you know that they don't always scan perfectly level. Yes. So this is a great way to make up for that. You can just level it off right here. And once you're done, you can just click apply. That's great. It's yeah. wild. And then um, Ken, go ahead and either go to file and save or click control S, one or the other. Okay. Save changes to disk. You can say save. Okay. All right. You'll know that it's saved if the button over to the left says undo save. That's oh, your right. visual cue that you've saved it. Okay. Okay. Ken, is there anything else that you would like to practice while you're being the tester? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kim, I'd love to give you a chance. Okay. Okay. So, Ken, if you'll stop sharing. Gladly. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for doing you're that. Welcome. Kim, if you'll share your Picasso screen. Okay. Uh... Okay. Great. Okay. So um, let's go to let's go to that same one that I did. So the top left, double click on it. That okay. one. So Kim, mm -hmm. I want you to try to do that retouch and do some of the detail work on the right. See how much you can remember of it, and I'll guide you if you forget. The right, like over here? Yes. Okay. So I want to make it bigger first, right? Yes. Because that would help. Yeah. Now, oops. Now, oh, you guys are in my way. So let me, okay, there we go. Okay. So retouch. Yes. And make it small. too small small is probably good on this one because some of the stuff is going to be hard those clouds okay. you could use Ooh. a bigger one Keeps but going. okay so right here try that that's probably going to leave a smudge but try it see it left that smudge there because it's right yeah. on the edge yeah hmm. okay i have it figured out a way to make it not smudge when you do that okay so yes, you clicked again, right? Yes. Okay, good. Now, now find the next one that you want to replace. Okay, you're one off, Kim. Click one more time. Okay, now when you click, slide. Mm -hmm. Slide it to a new spot where there's not dots. There you go. Okay. And now it's going to replace. So sometimes when you're clicking, this is a good thing for all of you to know. If you get off sequence, the first click, you're selecting what you want to replace. The second mm -hmm. click, you're telling it what to replace with. But sometimes you can get off and not realize which click you're on. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to replace a spot and you see that it's actually adding a dot instead of taking mm -hmm. away a dot, you'll know you're off. That's a bad thing. Joan, do you, <laughs> did, did you understand what I said there? Does that make sense to you? Yes. And are you on Picasa now? Are you talking to me? Yes. Uh, I don't know. I tell you what, I am so bad at everything computer that you'd probably have more luck with somebody else. <laughs> okay. Hey, it's no problem. Um, if I need to do a one-on-one -on -one with you sometime, I can do that. Thank you. Okay. All right, Kim. So you did that. So now go back over to your brush size and make it m like two thirds of the way to the right. Here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Okay, okay, now go to the clouds, the clouds that are over to the right, up a little bit. How do I get up there? Over to the right. Oh, hold on. Okay. 
Okay, go down, down, right there. Okay, up just a little. That's good. Now click and then go up to that big fluffy cloud near the middle. Here? Yes, and click. So by having a large circle, you are able to replace all those little dots at once. Oh, okay. Okay. So you need the little ones when you have to work in a small space. If you have a okay. big space to work with, it will be a huge time saver to work with a big circle. Okay. Yeah. And then let's say you were done. You can click apply. Oops. Uh, let's try just for fun, go to the third tab over with the um, paintbrush. Mm -hmm. and try sapia and let's see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. See, that's a way to get rid of the multi-tone. The purple yeah. and green. Yes. And then go over to the black and white. Let's see how that does. Ah, I like that too. Pick the one that you like real quick, Kim. Which mm -hmm. one do you like better? This one's more detailed. Okay, now go to the second tab with the sun. Second tab with the sun. Go Where? Over to your left. Okay, there's a, there's five tabs. One is a wrench, one is a oh, sun. Oh, I got you, yeah. Okay. okay, drag that shadows slider over. Yeah, I think that looks even better. That's my opinion about the middle. Okay. It gives definition to it. And I should crop it too, right? And then you can crop it, go for that. And then apply. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh, that's looking good. Okay. I like it. So my eye after seeing this, if you're looking for something that looks perfect, I see some dots in the top right. I see a smattering of dots along the bottom. Okay. Those are all easier to fix. The ones that are on top of the building are gonna be a lot harder because it's hard to find an area on the building that looks close enough to what you're trying to replace. Okay, so the ones along read. the bottom and the ones at the top, I think you could, you could replace them. Yeah, that'll so, be good. Like? Yeah, just like that. Like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The ones down here at the bottom, there's a tiny mm -hmm. little person. Yeah, you could do that. You're probably okay. going to want a smaller circle. Smaller. Yeah. yeah. So you want it to fit inside that area. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. And you could do all that and then go over to your left, the far mm -hmm. left. You see, there's that little tiny person right yeah. above to the left of there. There's a dot. Oops. Oh, he just lost his head. Just click anywhere. <laughs> I decapitated. <laughs> Do undo patch. <laughs> there he is. He's back. But I don't know if you know, there is software out there that will allow you to remove parts of an image if you want to. So okay. if you did want to remove a part of an image, it works for small things a lot better than big things. So if there's two people in your photo and one of them is no longer related to you, it's mm -hmm. going to be very difficult to remove them with this program. But if you have something small like this person or this pole that's right next to it or something, mm -hmm. you can, if the whole circle is bigger than that item, you can replace it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kim, is yes. there anything else in particular that you would like to try while we're in here? Um, no, I think what we did, I understand. Okay. So, okay. So let me, let me review real quick and then we're going to go to the next program. Okay. Replacing comment is amazing. Thanks. Thanks. Kim. Appreciate that. Okay. Crop. That's a basic thing. You'll need to do that with just about every photo that you're working with, especially if you scan it like Kim is doing. Straightening is a super helpful tool to be able to straighten the image. Um, retouching. So we did a lot of work on retouching. Mm -hmm. That's just an acquired skill, I would say, is being able to see how you need to move to replace. 
and knowing when you can and when you can't, you'll, you'll learn those things as you try. Red eye, getting rid of that. Saturation, so if you have a dull image and you wanna add a little color, saturation is the way to do that. Um, you can also do that slider like I did with the light to make an image a little brighter or darker, depending on what you want. Shadows can help with whitewashed photos and sharpening the image. Okay, uh, this is, this really is purely just for you to be able to um, look at the video later if you want to see it. But I'm gonna pull up this image and I'm gonna show you a few more things on here that you can do in Picasso. Not your everyday stuff, just a little bit more. So well, how, how will we be able to see this later? I'm gonna send you an email with a link that you can click on. Oh, great, thank you. Uh, picture collage is a cool thing. You can come in here and you can select the images that you want to use and you can select the size and then um, it will, let's see, scramble collage. It will give you some options about how you do that. Shuffle the pictures, okay? So I'm just telling you that this functionality is available. And then um, I'm gonna discard changes. I'm gonna go to tools over here. So um, you can do some geotagging and tagging. So let me try to make this simple. So when you take a photo on your phone, it doesn't just take the picture. It puts things down like when it happened, where it happened, who took it. It has different things that it includes with it. Picasso will allow you to add in some of those things. So you can add in that information if you want to, or you can create tags. So let me go back over here. one tags right here under view tags so if i do a tag then i can go in and add things that will help me to be able to search for a photo in the future so i would say tags is mostly helpful if you're doing large projects and you really want to be able to find them in the future Ken, I'm thinking that for what you're doing, that it's unlikely that you would need a tag. Okay, let me see. There was one other thing I wanted to check here. Uh, batch edit. Let me do that in the other program. So it's going to be easier over there. Okay, I'm going to leave Picasso. And now I'm going to go into Fast Stone Image Viewer. All right. <clears throat> There's two things that Fast Stone Imager Image Viewer does that I think are marvelous. One of them is it allows you to reorder photos and rename them in that order. Let me give you some scenarios when that's helpful. So let's say that you're trying to create some kind of slideshow, right? There are ways without creating a slideshow where you can use programs on your computer where you just click the right arrow and it will go through your photos. And so let's say you want them in the right order, right? They're chronologically or you've come up with some other category about how you want to do that. If you use Windows Explorer to rename, so let me, let me see if I can do this real quick. I'm gonna come out of it and I'm gonna screen share and I'm gonna do screen one. Okay, so now, can you guys see where it says photos to work on? Yes. Okay, so if I go into this, like I'm going into Windows Explorer, then I could right click on it, right mouse, and go down to 
Well, I'm working in a different program, but it's rename. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a button that says rename, and then I can manually type in hello. And so now that file is called hello. If I wanted to rearrange the order of photos in this system, I would have to systematically rename them and go, this one is going to be A. And the one that I want to show up next, I'm going to name B. And then the one I want to show up next will be C. Oh, man, I forgot. This one actually goes in the middle. OK, so now I have A, B, and B1, <laughs> and then C. And it gets more and more complicated to rename them to put them in the order that you want. It can take a long time. Let me just tell you, it can take a long time. So what Faststone allows you to do, you've got these little tiles of your pictures, little small versions of them. You can drag them and reorder them. I'm going to put that one there. I'm going to put this one over here. You see that little red line? It's showing you where it's going to go. I'm sliding across to the left now. I can go and put these in whatever order I want them to be in. And then when I'm done and I've slid them around, all you're doing is just dragging and dropping them. When I'm done, let me see if I can move. I'm having the same issue as you can. My menu is covering up some of the buttons that I need. Let me see if I can move it. OK, so then if this is the order that I want them to be in, then I'm going to right click on it. And I am going to sit here. I'm sorry, you guys. The buttons are covered up, so I'm not seeing what I normally see. OK, I'm going to batch rename them. They're in, no, that's not it because that's doing it. You guys, I apologize. Let's see if I can find it up here. Let me find that button in a minute. I'm sorry, you guys. Let me do this instead. OK, so let's say I've got a bunch of images, and now I want to rename them for some purpose. So I found everything that I want to include in a slideshow for an anniversary or for um, a retirement service or whatever the case may be. I'm going to select all of my photos. A shortcut, if you don't know that, is Control-A. We'll select all of them. Then I'm going to right click on it. And under tools, it's batch rename. And so on the left is all of the photos in that folder. And it's added all of them over here to the right to be renamed. Then down here, this is what it's going to be renamed to. So I'm going to say basic photo editing in honor of what we're doing. It's got these three pound signs or hashtags because it's saying up to three digits starting at one. I could have 200 of these or 300 of these or 400. And then rename. Are you sure you want to rename the files in the input list? Yes. And it's got this little check here, open containing folder. So when I do done, it's going to show. I'll show you guys what that looks like now. It's renamed all of these photos. 
all at once. Batch rename. It's a beautiful little feature. So that's one thing that it can do. You could also change. If I, again, selected all of these photos and I wanted to batch convert. So occasionally, you'll want to change a file type. If you've ever looked at the last three letters after your photo, often it's JPG, just like these are. Or it can be PNG or TIFF. There's a variety of different images that can be useful for things. So I could change all of these, for example, to a PNG if I wanted. I can do all of it at once. And then it will convert it. And I'm not going to do that one on this one because I don't really want to change all of them. Uh, Kim? Yes. Would you be willing to be my tester on this one again? OK. Do you have the uh, fast stone on your computer? I do. OK, if you'll open that up, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to let you share it. Okay. I can close Picasso now, right? You can. OK. Okay. Did Excellent. I do it? You did it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, while you're in that space, press Control A. Okay. Did. Did it select all of them? It didn't on my screen. No. No. Okay. Click your mouse in that area. Just click in that area anywhere. Anywhere. Okay. Anywhere. Mm -hmm. And now try Control A again. Okay. There you go. Now it's selected them. Go to that top left image and right click. Go to tools. Batch rename. Mm -hmm. Click on that. Yeah. And it has all of the images on the right. Mm -hmm. So where it says template. Mm -hmm. Replace that image with something, whatever you want to. Okay. Great. It's going to start at number one. Okay. So now you can click on rename. Are you sure you want to rename the files in the input list? Yes. And so if you want to open the folder to see that, you could click on that open containing folder, or you can just do done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a really, really helpful feature to be able to rename things all at once. Okay. Now, um, you do the drag, drag and change the order of them. Just pull and move them into different spots. Sure. Like that? Yes, that is okay. good. OK, now do the select all again. Mm -hmm. All right, and then right click on that first one again. <laughs> Go to tools, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. batch rename, and click on that. Here. OK. It's putting them back in order. Um, sort, go to where it says sort files by and it says no sort. Click that little drop down arrow. Where is that? In the, on the far right, mm -hmm. near the top, it says input list 25 files, sort files by no sort. Oh. Okay. Date taken. So those are different ways that you can do it. Okay. So sort of by name, for example. Yeah, try that. Okay. Okay. 
and then rename. And then you would be able to rename it if you wanted to. And leave the same template. You can do that, yes. Okay. You guys, I'm going to send you uh, a link and I'm going to show you how to change the order and then rename them in that order because I'm not remembering <clears throat> right, at, right at the moment which button it was. I apologize. Um, another feature that you can do here. So one more time, Kim, right click on that top left one photo. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Go down to tools. Mm -hmm. OK, I'm sorry. One up from that shuffle images. OK. Click on that. So if you were going to make a video slideshow and you were using images and there wasn't a particular order that you wanted them to be in, sometimes it's nice to just have them shuffled up. Okay. I, I will tell you if you're doing a video slideshow or a historical piece of some sort and you're trying to put everything in chronological order, it can be very time consuming to get it all just right. Um, most of the customers that I have, I just recommend to them to shuffle it. And because when people are watching it, it's kind of fun to see things at different times. Our memories aren't linear anyways. We don't usually remember things in a chronological order. We remember them by how they're connected to other things. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions that you guys have? Not How would we view the slideshow? Can you view the slideshow then? There should be a slideshow feature in here. Uh, okay. You see, um, if you go up, there's a little tiny hand and to the right of that. There's a um, right there. Click on that oh. slideshow. Okay. You're viewing it. You're not actually creating a slideshow. You're viewing it, but you can okay. select play and you would be able to view it there. Okay. And it said three seconds per slide, so it's going to automatically go from photo to photo. So yeah, this would be a great way if you have folks over and you could connect your um, either your computer to the TV or just have them look at it on the computer. Okay. All right. Very good. good there should be a button to stop it. I don't know. I just pressed there. escape. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, Ken, I see your question. It says, can you use the tag feature to add a search or sort function to the photos? So if you're searching for your photos, let me let me let me share my screen. Photos to reorganize. Okay, so Ken, this is um, a folder of photos. If I've got this folder opened and I want to search, this is in uh, Windows Explorer. Right. There's a search function right here. I can search by name. Um, there are some other ways that I can sort. So I have right clicked and I'm going to sort by, let's sort it by size. Okay, so it's sorted by size right now and I'm going to view um, the details. I want to see the details about it. Here's the name. This is the date when it was put into this folder, the type, the size. So if you add tags in, you would be able to sort by the tags. Okay. You would be able to search by the tags. Okay. Uh, Here's a little thing. If you right click to the right of this, it's going to give you more tabs that you could add. Date created, date modified. There's a bunch. <laughs> if you click okay. on more, sometimes what I'll do with videos is I'll come and select length because that will tell me how long the video is okay. without having to go in. Needless to say, there's a bunch of other things that you could search by. Yeah. And you showed us in Picasso where to add a tag. Is that that geotagging? Uh, or this is that is, something different? 
No, I'll, I'll go in and I'll show you again. Okay, so under view tags, you can type in a tag to add. So okay. spires, for example, now yeah. I'm gonna click the plus here. So now I've added that tag to it and I'm gonna save it, make sure it's saved. Click tag. And then can you add another one? Yes. Okay. Very nice. Okay. So yes, you'd be able to add these tags and then um, you can, you'll have this up on the screen, then you can add the tags to the photo and then it would be embedded with it. So the next logical question would be, um, if you look at the bottom of your screen now, there's a little blue line, Ken, and it starts with general one, J JPG, right. 131. If you see over to the right, it says tags, spires, and hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that tag is a part of that image. Okay. And again, that was, that tag came out of view. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I would think that what you would be able to do then is scroll through your photos and this little um, sidebar is going to stay there and you'd be able to click on the tags if if you have some standard ones that you want to add to them. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. What other questions do you guys have? Yes, Joan. You're on mute. Uh, I, I, I'm sure everybody else knows what this means, but what's that JPG? What is that? Mm -hmm. So there's different types of files for different purposes. Some, so PNG, PNG is a file type and usually they're higher resolution photos and they're going to be used um, in instances where maybe you need to make a poster out of an image and it needs to be super, super clear, might be a PNG. A JPEG um, is the most common format and it's usually JPG. Uh, Monica, you had their JPEG. I honestly don't know the difference between JPG and JPEG. They're both JPEG. That's, that's what they stand for. But the different file types, I think a part of the reason that file types came about is because there were different programs and they wanted to have their own proprietary format for the images. And some of them became standard. So you will very, very rarely find what is a TIFF, a TIFF. Mm -hmm. Just don't use it anymore. JPEG is, is typically what it is, or PNG. Um, a, a GIF, a GIF, uh, those are used with memes, and they're super, super low resolution file types, but they're very easy to add. You know how the memes have just a few seconds of something, and it usually repeats? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a usually a short thing. So it's a way to make use a, a file format that uses very little memory to make. Does that answer that question? Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. <clears throat> well, I'm not one to, uh, to keep you guys a long time. If I may, just very quickly, um, I think you all know about what I do. It's called More Than Memories, but I do three things. The first one is I take your old media and I digitize it and try to give you back something better than you started with. So a quick list is almost any kind of home movie format you can think of from the VHS to the mini DVs to the VHS Cs, all those different sizes. I can do all those slides photos, eight and 16 millimeter film reels, floppy disks, micro cassettes, cassettes and uh, records. So if you have any of that and you need it to be put into a form that'll last 
that would be great. The second one is doing video slideshows, which um, is so fun to get to do. I've done quite a few memorial videos, but I've also done some post vacation videos um, just to celebrate that. And that it doesn't have to just be old photos. It can be digital photos that you already have, just putting them together. Anniversaries, retirements, baptisms, you name it, any celebration, we can make something special for that. And then the third thing that I do is I video folks sharing their story that they want to communicate with their family now and in the future. So that's what I do. And um, if I can be of service, I would love to. I'm going to save right now in the chat is my email address and my phone number. I welcome you to reach out. You don't have to be a customer to reach out. Just reach out and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Great. Thank you, Will. My pleasure. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Will. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I will send you guys an email within the next couple of days that'll have the copy of this video and um, some a couple of videos that will answer the questions that I wasn't able to during the video. Okay.